I had a vision of Jesus Christ, clear as day. He was so beautiful. And he was there, and it was like rose gold. He was so beautiful. It was He was right there. And I had this vision of him. And when I had the vision of him, I felt unconditional love. This testimony is, well, it starts in 2011 till now. So it's over a course of eight years. Um, it's taken me a while <laughs> to share my testimony because um, it's been a journey. It's been, yeah, it's been a big journey. And when, look, I'll share my testimony with you how I came to know the Lord and then what I'll do is I'll make another video and that video will be my testimony coming out of New Age practices because that's a whole, that's a huge part of what I need to say, but because it's so long, I'll just make this video my testimony. My first testimony about how I came to know the Lord and um, how Jesus saved my life, literally. And then I'll yeah, make another video. So let's just dive straight in. So May 31st, 2011, I was 18 years old. And so just to give you a bit of a background, born and raised in Perth, WA, um, not born to a religious family. My mum was very spiritual and, you know, would talk about past lives and we would read the astrology and that was just normal to us. Um, my dad, I don't think he really believed in anything. My grandparents went to church, but it was, you know, this old school kind of Anglican church and we didn't really, I didn't really understand anything about it. So there I came from a, a background with, not knowing who Jesus was, what Jesus was, what it meant. I just, I didn't know anything about that. So that's just my, just to preface it, I didn't know anything about anything to do with Christian faith other than there was a cross and there was this guy called Jesus and he had, you know, blood on his wrists and his feet. And to be quite frankly honest, I just used to think that's a bit weird. All right. I always had a longing for God, though. So there was that. Looking back, there was always that longingness for God and for peace. So when I was 18, I left Australia, and it was always my dream to travel. I left Australia, and I went to a um, summer camp, and I was placed in Texas. And I was pretty shocked when I got the email and it said, you know, you've been placed in Texas. Cause here I was thinking, I'm going to go to, you know, Connecticut. I'm going to go to these, you know, green lush places. Anywho, I was sent to Texas and, um, we had two weeks orientation on this camp, our all girls camp. Oh, just to let you know, when you apply for a summer camp through this organization that I did, you can tick what sort of camp that you're looking for. Now the options are, would you like co-ed or would you like all boys or girls? And I went co-ed. Would you like a religious camp? And I said, absolutely not. So I get placed in a all girls camp and it turns out to be Christian. Unbeknownst to me. Didn't know that. So I rock up there and we've got two weeks orientation and it's a case of, oh dear, what have I got myself into? Is this really what I want to be doing? Um, and looking back, I was there was probably a small amount of culture shock taking place. I mean, it was the first, I'd only been to Bali, you know, I was 18 and, and although I was very, you know, independent and um, confident, I was probably trying to process a lot. Anywho, it was about a week in and... Us, 
there was one of these days, the kids hadn't arrived yet because it was just a week of orientation and there was a whole nother week to come. Anyway, I was placed in this room and there was about, I don't know, 12 beds in this room and um, there was another count, uh, camp counsellor and she was quite quiet and she was younger and um, I had the understanding that she was a Christian girl and I felt quite shy about that because, like I said at the beginning, I didn't really know anything about that. So, um, yeah, I just kind of felt shy to make friends with her or, you know, I was kind of hesitant. And she kept to herself as well, bless her. Um, so one of these days I started feeling a bit weird. Oh, it was like a... It was like a feeling of um, restlessness, but a weird feeling in your stomach. Not anxiety, but kind of a feeling of just, you know, just this weird feeling. Anywho, I broke away from the, the group and I went into my dorm and this girl was in the dorm and she was on her bed and I kind of came in and um, she said, oh, are you okay? And I said, oh, I just feel really weird. I feel really strange and we got talking and to be honest I can't really remember too much of what we said other than me you know opening up and saying oh that's right the words came out of my mouth and it was I want God and it, it came out of my mouth and it surprised me too and she said um, you know, he's here for you, and she starts praying. So I'm on my bed. I've come in, I've sat down, and all this is happening. She starts praying. I get waves of heat come over my body, like vroom, 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 heat. I just remember sweating. I remember feeling really, really hot, and I remember feeling like I couldn't hold myself up. You know, it was like a feeling as though I was, kind of leaning back like that and I had a vision of Jesus Christ clear as day he was so beautiful and he was there and it was like rose gold he was so beautiful it was he was right there and I had this vision of him, and when I had the vision of him, I felt unconditional love. It was pure and utter love, and it was warm, and in this moment that felt like eternity, I felt, I knew that Jesus knew every single thing about me, and he, he knew he knew me through eternity. It was like forever, 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 forever. And all in one moment. And there were no words, but there was like a knowing. There was like a communication through my cells almost. And it was a knowing. And he, he said something along the lines of, I've always been here. I'm never going to leave you. I'll, I'll always be here. I've never left you. I've been here the whole time. And it was just love, love, love. Yeah, complete and utter love. So I had that experience. And the girl, her name was Adrian. Um, God bless Adrian. She was probably praying next to me, but I, you know, I had this whole experience and, and then I, I can't really remember what happened afterwards. It was all a bit of a, um, a bit of a blur, but that I definitely remember. And you've got to imagine, I've just left my family. I've come to this camp in Texas, and I have a vision of Jesus Christ. What do I do? Ah! I literally thought, oh my gosh, maybe I'll just get back on a plane and go home. But what happened was. Um, I told my family, I was like, I've seen Jesus, he's real. And they were like, oh, okay. Um, really supportive, really sweet. But I didn't know what to do with that. 
I had no idea what to do with that. All I knew from that moment on, from the 31st of May 2011, I knew from that moment on that Jesus Christ was real. He was real and he loved me. So Adrian started giving me Christian material, you know, things like um, kind of books and pamphlets and things like this. And it was so foreign to me. I just, I didn't know what to do with it. It, it was just too much. I just did not know what to do with it. So I didn't really take on any of that stuff. And so I didn't take on any of the Christianity side of it because I didn't understand it. It was just too foreign. Anywho, for the next three months, what Jesus um, did is he showed me things. So um, God started attuning me to his presence to his spirit and he would show me things he would um you know I'd be sitting in nature and there would be this beam of light glittering on the lake and then I'd feel the presence of God and he would say can you see me and I said yeah I can see you so for those whole three months that I was on that camp Jesus was with me I felt his presence he was with me and he showed me things. He showed me things that I went through in my life, um, really dark times and really sad times. And he relived. He made me relive those moments through my memory. But in every single memory, Jesus was with me. So he was showing me. He knows my journey. He knows what I've been through, and through every single thing, he was there. So it was really sweet. Um, then. After the camp was over, I felt the presence, that closeness, it left, it departed. And I remember being really, really sad. Like I remember mourning. Um, and I remember feeling a little lost, thinking, oh, my gosh, you know, well, what do I do now? I know that Jesus is real. What do I do now? Keeping in mind, I didn't adopt anything Christian because it was foreign and I didn't think it was necessary. So the next six years was a spiritual journey for me and I spent the next six years traveling through, traveling the world actually, um, getting jobs, you know, at hostels, getting job, jobs on yachts. God took me to places and took me through experiences that could only be explained by believing in God. I mean, anywho, so straight after that camp, okay, here's another thing. So Satan is real. Um, that's a hard truth that people don't want to talk about and that's something that people shy away from and when they hear the word Satan they just think okay you're a fruit loop I want nothing to do with you but the fact of the matter is is that Satan is real um, I can't emphasize that enough um, actually back in the camp when I first had when I first saw Jesus I had a, a dark entity actually come into my room and prevent me from sleeping for about a week and it was the blackest of the blackest of the blackest of the blackest form of of just horribleness you know just hate and fear and everything else and it would um come into my room and that was satan and i would have um he came through my dreams. I would have perverted dreams about Jesus. I would have self-loathing thoughts. And I somewhat knew that it was something other than the light trying to bring me down. I didn't know it was Satan. I thought, okay, this is a demon. This is a demonic being that's come into my room. And it probably was, but at the end of the day, that is Satan. Anywho, straight after I left and I felt the, the closeness kind of go a bit, I went to a psychic. Now, this is something that I do not do anymore. And 
I will post this in my next video about my testimony coming out of being a new ager to a um, Christian, um, born again Christian. So Satan got in quick sticks and I went and uh, went to a um, psychic, a uh, fortune teller, and um, Satan right there and there planted seeds of uh, evil and deceit and lies through that psychic and Luckily, I'm rid of those seeds now, but those seeds eventually um, led me on on tracks of complete delusion and, and everything else, but that was Satan. But anywho, um, I mention that now because it's relevant to what I'm going to say in this video, so that's why I mention that. Anywho, um, that psychic, she she said, she, she, she said um, things like, Oh, you know, you're gonna be, you're gonna be, you're gonna come into a lot of money. You're gonna be famous. She more or less planted the seed of greed in me, um, the seed of fame, like that seed of like yearning for fame or like yearning for recognition from the world. She planted that seed in me, or rather, Satan did. And it was all dressed up nicely, and it was dressed up, you know you know, the wolf dressed as the lamb, it was all said in a nice way and you're thinking, oh, I'm doing the right thing, I'm going to do this for God. You're not. Anyway, I was not, um, but I didn't know that at the time. Anyway, I digress. Let me get on to it. Um, I wrote some notes down because I knew I would just end up getting off track. Right, bang. So I went on this journey, went on a six-year journey, travelled through. I was like the spiritual junkie. I'm like, right. I've seen Jesus now. I'm going to know the truth. So I was doing, you know, Reiki, yoga. I'd go to retreats. I would go to uh, meditation courses. I would go to extreme lengths to understand myself more. I just had this yearning. I've got to know. I've got to know. I've got to know the truth. I've got to know the truth. So I went all over the world. I met so many people. had so many conversations. Da, 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 da. Believing that I was doing the right thing for God. Uh, yeah, so that happened. Now, anyway, fast forward it to 2016, and I'm in Peru. So I find myself in Peru, and I had a huge encounter with God, with Christ. Thank you, God. Um, right, so I'm sitting there, da-da-da laying on the lawn, looking up, just relaxing. And then I'm hit with what feels like a train. <laughs> Bang. Now, I'm instantly taken to a place. <clears throat> uh, to a, it was like a place underneath. It was like a... <sighs> and it was... And God had a hold of me. The Holy Spirit was, <clears throat> you know, like... It had a hold of me, and I was like, I'm like this, but I'm seeing everything through a vision, and I was taken to this place, and it was instant, and I was surrounded by, um, it's quite disturbing, this is quite disturbing, and I'm sorry if this disturbs anyone, but this is the truth, and this is what happened. I was taken to a place where there were dead babies everywhere, um, just I was surrounded by just dead babies and it wasn't, it was, I didn't see any faces or anything. It was just dead babies and I, I screamed out and I actually, in real life, I, I screamed out and I couldn't be consoled. I was just ah! like screaming and I'm saying to God, why, why, why? I was on my hands and knees because you've got to understand this is happening you know, in a way where it feels completely and utterly real to me, okay? So I'm on my hands and knees and I'm screaming, why, why God, why God? And the pain and the anguish and the heartache that I was experiencing and a friend who was with me comes running over and he says, what's happening? And I said, he's killed them all, they're, they're dead, they're dead. 
they're dead. And he said, you know, who's dead? Who's dead? I said, the babies, the babies. And he's probably thought, you know, he probably just thought, you know, what the heck is going on? But I couldn't console myself and it was so real. Um, <coughs> sorry, I'm looking after a puppy right now. <laughs> that just gave me a fright. Um, so that happened. And as this is happening, God comes through and he says, it is okay. He can have the flesh, but the souls come back to me. It is just the flesh. The souls come back to me. And all of those babies, all of these, um, they're like beams of kind of golden light came out of the babies and they all went back to God. And he kept reassuring me. He said, it's okay. It's just the flesh. He can have the flesh. The souls come back to me. The souls come back to me. And in that I found, I started to calm down with that. It was like, okay, okay. And I saw all those souls go back to Christ. And um, Christ was very calm. And I couldn't see Christ. Christ was just light. It was just, it was like the brightest light you can imagine. <clears throat> so that happened. Um, and then it was like, oh, okay, I started to settle. And then whoa, I was hit again. Bang! And I can't breathe. And I was, <gasps> I was, I was heavy and I was pushed down to the ground. I was being strangled by sin. Now you've got to understand, I didn't know any of these types of words, the relevance, the language, because I don't have that background. But this is what it was because Christ was telling me. So I'm being strangled and I'm like, you know, I'm on the ground and it was sin. It was all this sin. It's like I could not breathe. I could not get oxygen into my body. And I said, God, help me. Help me. And he said, you need the blood of Jesus. You need the blood of Jesus. You need the blood of Jesus. And my friend's like, you know, what can I do? What can I do? I was like, I need the blood of Jesus. And um, I said to God, where is, where is it? You know, where is the blood of Jesus? And he said, rose water. Just use rose water. My friend had rose water. He ran inside his house. Do, 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 do. Um, his wife actually made this rose water, bless her, and he starts pouring it, like, you know, as this rose water is hitting me, it's like a bit of, I can breathe a bit, I can breathe a bit, I can breathe. It wasn't until there was all the rose water, the blood of Christ over me, could I breathe. And then um, God said, the blood of Christ has saved you. Now, this is all happening. And I'm just like, oh my gosh. And then... What happened after that, um, God revealed to me some things that were happening on the world. He revealed to me what he is not. He revealed to me what he is. He said, um, he said, I am the father. Um, my son is the way. Jesus Christ is your saviour and his blood has saved you. So all of that was pretty foreign to me and all I know is that after that day, I mean, I couldn't, it, it took me about five hours to actually kind of be normal after that. I was wired. I, my, my eyes were like that. I was just like, you know, Christ is real. I, Jesus is blood. The, the cross. You know, like I was probably like one of those crazy um, prophets or something that you read about. You know, I'm not saying I'm a prophet, but, you know, you hear about these people having these experiences and on the outside they look crazy, but being the person that's actually gone through um, an experience with what I believe to be the Holy Spirit, um, it's hardcore. It's crazy. 
Anywho, so that happened. Now, at that time, I was completely and utterly a new ager to the nth degree. Um, so just to let you know that that came through when I was at, I was at my peak, actually, like my peak of new ageness, like the top of the top of the top of the top of the top. I was literally ready to, you know, you know, write a book and, and, and do all this and da 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 and anyhow, I'll put that in my next video. So what happened after that is um, my entire life changed and I more or less ended up going back to Australia after being away for about um, six or seven years and, you know, on and off um, because I did, yeah, I, I did live in Australia but I worked abroad. Anywho, um... Here's where it gets interesting. So I got back to Australia and before I got back to Australia, um, after this experience, I had an experience with Jesus, another one. And in this experience, there, he was standing next to me and he was wearing a robe and he um, had a stick. Like it was a quite a thick stick. And he was standing there. And we were looking at this kingdom. And this kingdom was of my work. And I was really happy because I said, Jesus, look what I've made for you. And this is all, you know, that whole journey that I was on, like the six-year journey, the whole spiritual journey, me gathering all this information and wanting to know the truth and compiling it all and about to write the book and about to let the world know this is the truth. That's what we were looking at. It was, you know, this entire kingdom. And I, you know, I was really excited. I was proud of it because, you know, all of this is for you, God. This is for you. And Jesus said, I don't know this. And I remember feeling so hurt, so sad. And I, I said, but God, this is all for you. And he goes, this is not for me, but this is the work of the devil. He got that stick and he just, doop, he tapped the side of a building in this kingdom, huge kingdom. And it just went, it just collapsed like bang. And I'm standing there like, and I'm, you know, everything that I've made. And he said, now you are to start from me. Now, I didn't really know what that meant. I was gutted. And after that point, I was propelled into uh, darkness, really. I didn't know who I was. I had extreme depression. I was so confused. I was so confused. I just felt like I was plunged into nothingness. Like I had gone back to, I had gone back to I felt like I was an atom floating in, you know, in a dark space. And I went back to Australia broken. I was just like broken. And uh, that first year that I came back was the hardest year of my entire life because I had to start from ground zero. It was almost like minus zero. And I had to compile everything and just think, what did I just go through, you know? So... That happened. Now, when I came back, I was still practicing. I was still doing my new age stuff um, because I was trying to make sense of it all. And I reached, I thought I was reaching God through those practices. Anyway, I'll wrap this up. I know this is getting quite long. Sorry, guys. Um, God came through and he said, Rachel, I want, I want you to go to church. And I was like, 
E for real. That's a pretty big ask. And I've never really been to church. Where would I even begin? But I said, okay. So I got on Google, Ugh. churches in Fremantle. That's where I was at the time. And I saw a church, C3, Fremantle Church. And um, I said, okay, God, like, I guess I'm going to go to this church. So I went to the church and I'm just kind of, you know, and I, I remember sitting there and they were talking about scripture and I didn't even know what scripture was and they're saying things like, you know, Acts and Romans and I'm going, may as well be talking Chinese. I had no idea. Anyway, so I thought, all right, I'll go to this church and, uh, you know, listening to God. And then God comes back about two weeks later and he says, he puts it on my heart very strongly, very loudly and clear. And he says, I'd like you to read the Bible. And I'm like, oh, now you're pushing it. First church, now a Bible. Like, really? So, again, I didn't even know where to get a Bible. So, again, I just jumped on Google, like, where do I get a Bible? And there was a shop. So, I went and bought this Bible. That was, yeah. And I started reading it. And it was really hard, but I got the New Living Translation because um, it's been translated in an easier in an easier sense. So I think I'll, I'll eventually probably move on to a different version, but for right now, this has served itself per perfectly. So I started reading and that's when I found out about the gospel. I had never heard the gospel that whole time. So from, from, from seeing Jesus in Texas to now, to, to then, which was um, 2017, I'm reading the gospel for the first time, right? And I'm going, oh my gosh, so I'm starting to get to know. Long story short, um, I ended up watching and I watching the gospel. There's a free one on YouTube, and just just going, wow, 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 wow. Um, and happy to report that I got baptized on October. I'm pretty sure it was October the 13th. Um, with that C3 Fremantle Church and gave my life to the Lord and I have never looked back. Um, and just to finish off, which I found this really interesting, is uh, a year later, so it was 2018, last year, I'm talking to my brother about that experience that I had with the Holy Spirit where I was crying for these children, those babies that were passed away. And the next day I opened the Bible and I was reading Matthew 2 and that's when I realized that what I went through is actually in the Bible under my name. Spelt differently. I'm A-E-L. Rachel in here is E-L. Doesn't matter. Um, Herod was furious when he realized that the wise men had outwitted him. He sent soldiers to kill all the boys in and around Bethlehem who were two years old and under. Based on the wise men's report of the star's first appearance, Herod's brutal action fulfilled what God had spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. A cry was heard in Ramah, weeping and great mourning. Rachel weeps for her children, refusing to be comforted, for they are dead. Now that is Matthew 2, 16. Um, a cry was heard, that's Matthew 2, 18. So that 
I read in the Bible two years after I had the experience. I didn't need any confirmation, but God just keeps confirming through his word that what I went through was real and it was God sent. So there's my testimony. Didn't expect it to be 35 minutes long, sorry, but I hope that this testimony can shine some light on other people's experiences or um, just help, just to help anyone to realize that Jesus Christ is real. He died for our sins. Um, Jesus Christ is the way. He is the way. There is no other way. It's through Jesus Christ. Um, I'm only, you know, three years old walking with the Lord, but I'm learning stuff every single day. And I think the more that I learn and the more that I read the word and the more that I stay in the Bible and the Christian belief, the closer I get, I'm just in truth. And everything else just seems to fall away. Anything not of Christ is just falling away. So, look, there's my testimony. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to, at some stage, do another video about my whole New Ager journey because God's been putting that on my heart because right now the New Agers are coming out of the woodwork and it's becoming rife amongst us and it is not the way. Anywho... I uh, hope you have a lovely day. God bless you all. And yeah, I hope you guys find Jesus and I hope you uh, make Jesus Lord and Savior of your life. It's never too late. Okay, bye.